In Throne and Liberty, you'll eventually get to a stage of really needing those precious armor growth stones in order to max out and level up that epic armor. In this video, I bring you the best way and the best farm you can do indeed to get these precious armor growth stones and do so efficiently. How's it going guys? My name is DPJ. Now I am away until the 5th of November, so the videos you are seeing now are all being scheduled. But I'm still doing the Lucent giveaways. In fact, when I return, I will pick 10 winners from the comment section of my videos scheduled while I'm away and announce them around the 5th of November. Now, to win, it's as simple as this. Drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, make sure you are subbed. The more I see you active on my Throne and Liberty videos, the more of a chance you have of winning. So good luck, everybody. So as you progress to a level 50, you earn tons of armor growth stones. The precious variants too, but not that many, you're just basically getting started with these. But eventually you run out of options in getting these and you'll come to a point where I find myself right now, where crafting these is the most efficient thing you can do, which I feel myself now, although there's certain few farms and certain few enemies I can farm for these, I feel it's 1000 times quicker to just craft these things. And that's why I bring you guys today the best and fastest way you can farm these materials in order to craft these in abundance so you can level up that epic armor. Okay, so if you head to the crafting vendors which allow you to craft those precious armor growth stones, you will see the requirements to craft them are one precious magic powder, one precious stalin ore, and one precious polished crystal. So let's break down these items and the best way you can get them and get them fast. Well, first and foremost, the precious magic powder. This is probably the main ingredient here and while there are ways to get this quite, quite easily. The first way to get plenty of this is to dissolve those epic pieces you have no more need for. Epic armor will give you 10 precious magic powder and weapons will give you 20 precious magic powder. Now I know that epics and dissolving them isn't an option for most players uh, as of right now, which is completely understandable. So what other easy methods can you use to get these? Well, the most notable and efficient way is crafting them. Now crafting in this game like this you can always use that pyramid basis of building up and while in throne and liberty it actually isn't difficult at all to see yourself getting a load of what you need by doing this as it works like this in this game five magic powder crafts one quality magic powder five quality magic powder crafts one rare magic powder and five rare magic powder crafts one precious magic powder now when you start from the bottom with that magic powder, I mean you can get this easily for dissolving that white gear. One white armor piece dissolved makes 10 magic powder and one white weapon dissolved makes 20 magic powder. So let's work with white weapons here. One white weapon dissolves makes 20 magic powder. So working out for how much you'd need in regards to white weapons to craft one precious magic powder, you need 7 weapons. So 7 weapons dissolved will give you 140 magic powder. With 140 magic powder, you can literally create 28 quality magic powder. With 28 quality magic powder, you can craft 5 rare magic powder, which is then needed to craft 1 precious magic powder. And there you have it guys, from the bottom to the top. Now you can easily get white weapons from the equipment merchant. He sells weapons for like 9k gold or solent each. Seven weapons will cost you around 62,000 solent. You can also get white gear from killing low level mobs too, which I will state is something I was doing and wasn't having much luck with. I wasn't getting that many drops if I'm being honest with you. Now another way you can get magic powder and rare magic powder is from doing those resistance contracts. Although you don't get mass amounts, you still get some. It's normally the rare magic powder too. Remember guys, magic powder no matter the rarity below precious can always be crafted up and it's why I believe the best place to actually farm for magic powder due to the amount of gear that drops which you can then dissolve is those open world dungeons. Now to do these you obviously need those official contract tokens which allow for enemies within these open world dungeons to drop you that gear. And it's my opinion if you have these it's by far the best way to get said gear. White, green, blue and even purple. Anything you don't want dissolve and create that magic powder with it. And then once you have an abundance of any type of magic powder, build it up to get that precious magic powder. Okay, so with magic powder out of the way, we now need to work on gems needed to craft these precious armor growth stones. They are the precious stalin ore and the precious polished crystal. 
First up, the Persia Stannon Ore. Now, this is an item you can acquire in a certain few ways. If you select on the item and check where it's required from, you can see quite a few possibilities. But in my opinion, your best bet in getting these uh, and the ones you can craft out of these is definitely going to be in those open world dungeons yet again, using those Abyssal Contract tokens. The precious stalin ore are quite rare, but what's common are the rare stalin ore and the quality stalin ore. And like everything else in this game, guys, you can craft your way up. Five quality stalin ores craft one rare, and five rares will craft you that precious, and then you're good. It only takes one of these guys uh, to be included in crafting that precious armor grove stone. You can also buy these gems from the contract coin merchant. But they are limited and prices are a little steep, I won't lie to you. You can also get these all from the level 50 co-op dungeons too. Um, so yeah, pretty cool. You also get the ore from the resistance contracts too. So if you do these for the magic powder, then make sure you're also refreshing them to land yourself with the right ore that you need. You can also get multiple of these from the allied resistance forces contracts. These are brought from the Sundry's merchant. And although you are limited to how many of these you can pick up per week, uh, these contracts, when you activate them, you can refresh them and get these crystals and sometimes get 10 plus of each one for doing a single bounty or single contract. So that's pretty cool too. But yes, plenty of ways to get that Stalin ore people. Again, from the bottom to the top, you can always craft your way up. In my opinion, the open world dungeons are the most efficient way in doing this so yes if you have those abyssal contract tokens do what you gotta do okay so next up we have the precious polished crystal now with these like the other precious gems open world dungeons are your best bet in getting these or the lesser versions to craft your way up five quality precious crystals will craft you a rare polished crystal and five rare polished crystals are needed to craft a precious polished crystal this is by far the best way in my opinion of getting these but they do drop and are obtainable from other places the watchers post contract merchant has resistance contracts here which can drop you 10 plus of the rare polished crystal so that's basically one contract you're doing here guys which will allow you to craft two of the precious polish crystals that's per contract that is absolutely incredible it really is and i mean as long as you have those contract rights too you can keep on doing these and stacking these the rare polish crystals and then you can just craft the precious ones when you need them simple as that so that really isn't a bad turnaround in my opinion so use either the watches post contract merchant and his resistance contracts do these refresh them until you get them pop up with those uh, polished crystals there for you or use the open world dungeons and spend those abyssal contract tokens in farming these you'll get plenty of gems you'll get plenty of other materials too so do what you gotta do but there we have it guys the best farms in the game to get the ingredients the materials in crafting the precious armor growth Stones. This is what I've been doing now and I've more or less got all my armor leveled up. I think when I got to a level 50 and I ran out of choices and options here, I think most of my gear was around a level 4 or 5 uh, and now I've got multiple pieces at a 9. I've got pieces in my uh, vault or in my stash which are level 9 too and what I'm currently wearing, a lot of it is also near that level 9 and it's what I'm going to continue to do to farm to max at my current gear. But guys, if you enjoyed the video, leaving a like really helps me out. If you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. And hopefully, guys, I will see you on that next one.